Thank so you. the speaker, thank you, uh, is Adil Kuran, is a PhD candidate of the University of Vermont, uh, has a master's degree in electrical engineering from the American University of Sarhar, and his research interest is aggregated modeling and control of distributed energy resource for demand dispatch. So I pass the word to Adil. Uh, thank you for the introduction, and it's great to be here. Uh, today I'll be presenting our work on uh, identification of uh, hot water and use process for electric water heaters. And uh, the main reason why in this work we're considering is that uh, the type of data that is available for the identification, especially in the case of electric water heaters. So if you uh, look at large aggregations of electric water heaters, we know that uh, their power consumption varies depending upon the time of, type, time of day. So mornings are expected to uh, be a large power consumption time periods because of larger water draws as compared to the afternoons. And uh, the second thing is the effect of uh, utility control, such as the one shown here. And this data was collected by a local utility in Vermont for about 1,700 electric water heaters. Uh, in this demand response program, the entire population was forced off for about five hours and we're all familiar with the problem of uh, core load pickup. So based on those, uh, these two uh, reasons, uh, this is what's something that motivates us to work on this problem. And we, in our work, we are also considering the type of data that is available for estimation. So usually the AMI data uh, represents the power consumption of an individual electric water heater. And what's not observed is the hot water extraction process itself. Uh, although that we know that uh, the power consumption is expected to vary, uh, but within a small period of time, like in the mornings between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m., we can think that the process is in some sort of stationary steady state. And uh, we can develop our identification schemes focusing on each of these uh, time periods, but these identification schemes will be uh, generalizable to each of them. So we just need one identification scheme that is applicable to each of these periods. And then in the end, we can uh, piece together a full day's profile. So uh, we are really interested in, based on the limitation of the data available, uh, we are really interested in the models of the end use consumption that are identifiable from uh, the AMI data. So based on this assumption, uh, we take as input the AMI data and uh, calculate uh, what's called the total busy time. So that represents uh, the total time an electric water heater was on uh, within a time period. So the AMI data is collected in the form of like kilowatt hours within 15 minutes, for example, and total busy time would then represent uh, what portion of that 15 minutes uh, the electric water heater was on. So this along with some more information about the fleet itself, like the uh, size of the heating, rating of the heating element or the thermal time constants, uh, we can feed that, we can compute first some statistics uh, of this total busy time and then uh, feed it to our estimation algorithm and it will give us as output the parameters of the end use process itself. So in this work, uh, we develop first the analytical expressions of the statistics of total busy time uh, and then we use them for estimation. Uh, generally in the literature, what end use process is modeled as a white noise process with drift. However, it, is, it has been argued that uh, white noise is not an exact representation of the nature of water extraction process itself. And the main reason behind it is because water extraction from the tank exclusively results in the heat loss and there are no random heat injections into the tank. So white noise may be a good option for uh, other types of thermostatically controlled loads like air conditioners or maybe uh, refrigerators, but uh, it doesn't physically represent the end use, the nature of the end use process itself. Uh, furthermore, uh, utilities are, this type of estimation scheme, uh, utilities can use to obtain the baseline consumption of a specific population just by looking at the AMI data. And also, of course, they can use that then to uh, predict uh, the control load behavior so they can evaluate the performance of a specific demand response program, for example. And in this work, uh, we develop estimation schemes that are similar in spirit to the work done by Alfreek and Melame, uh, but that was only applicable to the case of electric space heaters. And in this work, we are focused mostly on electric water heaters. So the modeling process starts with the model of an individual electric water heater, which is a first order differential equation. Of course here, uh, X represents the average heat, uh, average temperature inside the tank. M is the state of the thermostatic switch and the water extraction process, we assume that it consists, uh, it is modeled as a two state Markov chain with rates lambda zero and lambda one. 
And these rates, lambda zero and lambda one, are the parameters that we want to identify from the AMI data. And the AMI data is actually like uh, some form of the uh, measurements obtained for the variable M, which is the state of the thermostatic switch. So uh, we first look at how the temperature evolves inside the, the tank of an electric water heater. So the electric water heaters are usually designed to appear within a narrow dead band, shown here as X minus and X plus. And we can uh, look at how the temperature evolves by looking at small time instances as the, the temperature evolves. So in, for example, in the first interval, where we assume starting from the uh, one state, that means like electric water is on, but there is no water extraction. So the variable Q is equal to zero. Uh, it's reasonable to assume that a temperature will increase with some uh, rate V1 shown here. And uh, in the next time instant, it's also possible that because of water extraction, the temperature will momentarily decrease with some rate shown here with V1 prime. And we can go on uh, following how the temperature evolves within the dead band until it reaches the upper boundary X plus at which point it turns off. And uh, then uh, the process either goes through uh, the process temperature, you, you know, monotonically decreases, but depending upon whether the extraction is present or not, uh, the rates may be different. So just by looking at the states of the thermostatic switch and the state of the water extraction process, uh, we can classify these time instants into four states. So the first one could be, uh, could be classified as belonging to state one. So one means that uh, there is, uh, the electric water heater is on, but there is no water extraction. And at the next time instant, when there is water extraction, we classify it as one prime. And we can do, go on doing this for other uh, time periods, and especially in the, in the zero and zero, in the off states too. Now, uh, recall that in our assumption, we say that the water extraction process is not measured. So what that means is that these transitions between one and one prime and zero and zero prime, this is not what we can observe. What we can observe is the transitions at the edges of the dead band that happens at X minus or X plus. And that's what's given by the, uh, by the energy data that uh, we are working with. So uh, what we, to overcome this problem, we can define a Markov renewal process by recording the switching instance of the thermostat switch at the edges of the, of the dead band and we end up with a four state process. Uh, <clears throat> here prime indicates that uh, the water extraction is present and uh, well, the absence of prime of course indicates that there is no water extraction present. And notice here that the transitions in this type of definition of the Markov renewal process, the uh, transitions between one and one prime and zero and zero prime are not defined. So that actually represents the, you know, again, the type of data that is available for estimation. Uh, also, if you aggregate the states horizontally, uh, we get a two-state process, which again uh, represents the, uh, the state of the thermostatic switch. And if we aggregate states vertically, we get back the end-use uh, process and whose parameters lambda zero and lambda one are uh, what we are trying to estimate. Now, uh, we, uh, in this Markov renewal process, uh, we get like eight transition probability density functions, and these are not known. So in order to get that, uh, we look at the aggregate behavior of the population, which is given by a set of coupled partial differential equations. And these really describe that whether in the on or off states, how the temperature probabilities evolve. So for example, in the on state, the temperature would increase from uh, left to right in the figure shown on the right here. And in the off state, the temperature would decrease from uh, right to left. And uh, these transition probability densities are then the, uh, what's called the first passage time densities evaluated at the switching instances, which occur at the <coughs> temperature dead by an X minus and X plus. And in order to solve that, we uh, define a set of first passage time problems. Uh, but uh, we know that solving PDEs is a bit hard. So uh, instead we took a, what's called the moment based approach. So we take the Laplace transforms of these uh, uh, of these PDEs and then uh, we take successive derivatives and set and evaluate them at zero to get a uh, different uh, order of the moments. So K represents the higher, highest order of the moment considered. And as it turns out that the moment based expression is actually, is a recursive, can, uh, so the moments can be obtained recursively uh, in the form of a linear OBE. And if we stack those uh, moments together, we get a linear system. So that of course is more easier to solve than the actual uh, PDE, coupled PDE system. 
But also, if we uh, look at this linear system, this A matrix, which represents the, the usual A and B matrices in linear system theory. So this A matrix, uh, it has a specific structure. So it has two eigenvalues, each with multiplicity k plus one, where k is the highest order of the moment considered to get uh, to, to form this linear system. Uh, one of these eigenvalues is zero, but the other eigenvalue, it is related to the physics of the process itself. So uh, the term in the brackets, which is highlighted here, is what's called the average cooling rate. And by definition, this, uh, this average cooling rate has to be less than zero. And this is true for a properly sized electric water heater. So in short, uh, we get, uh, we define four uh, first passage time problems and we solve each of them with appropriate initial and boundary conditions. And we get as an output eight transition probability density functions, which are in terms of the uh, unknown parameters lambda zero and lambda one that we are trying to estimate. Now, up till now, uh, we have fully defined uh, what are the transition probability densities of the Markov linear process, the four straight process, but we still don't know what connects the AMI data, the energy measurements to this process. And for that, we, uh, look at the uh, state of the thermostatic switch itself. So as I mentioned before, this is a two-state process and it's something which is called the alternating renewal process because the name suggests it alternates between on and off states. And uh, if we divide this, uh, this is uh, in this plot uh, we show the one particular realization of this process. And uh, if we divide this process into uh, what's called the windows of equal uh, length, uh, we can compute what's called the total time an electric water heater is on, which is shown by uh, the shaded region in here. And this can mathematically be represented as this, uh, the integral within that time interval. And this is what uh, is called the total busy time. Uh, the statistics of this total busy time, like the first moment, second moment, and autocorrelation, we can uh, get those in terms uh, of the transition probability densities that we developed earlier. So, in the end, uh, we get analytical expressions of the mean and the second moment of these uh, uh, total busy time, which is the random variable, of course. And uh, these mean and uh, the, the first and second moment essentially represents the mean uh, and the correlation, for example, of the MI data itself. So now uh, we have all the tools necessary to uh, define our optimization problem. And we, uh, we use it to define a loss function that aims to minimize uh, the distance between the uh, analytical statistics and the sample statistics. So again, to iterate here, the analytical statistics are in terms of the functions of uh, the unknown parameters lambda zero and lambda one. Uh, and these are again the nonlinear functions and they're not uh, trivial to obtain. And the sample statistics come directly from the AMI data itself. Uh, to validate our uh, estimation procedure, we considered a population, a homogeneous one in this case, that consists of 5,000 simulated electric water heaters, each with a rated power of four kilowatts. And uh, when we divide, we take the individual power consumption data of an, of an electric water heater, we divide it into intervals, in this case of one minute length, we compute statistics of the total busy time and apply our estimation algorithm. As it turns out, we get back the, uh, the true values very closely. Now, in order to see uh, how these estimated values perform in predicting the control load behavior, uh, we considered the uh, case of the on-off uh, demand response program as shown earlier. And as it turns out that with the estimated parameters, we can get, get a close approximation of uh, the control load behavior after the devices are allowed to turn back on after we have four hours, of course. And also, if you notice at the temperature plot shown at the bottom here, this is the average temperature of the fleet. And uh, we can also get close, uh, approximate, we can closely approximate the average temperature itself. So what that means that this is a kind of a metric used to value the quality of service of the demand response program itself. So this also shows that with these estimated parameters, one can potentially uh, evaluate how good a demand response program is according to a specific type of population based maybe on a geographical location. Now, uh, then we consider the case that what if like this high uh, density data, like this data is not available. Uh, what if we have let's say five minute or 15 minute data available? So uh, in this case, as it turns out that our estimates differ a bit. However, if we look at the uh, eigenvalues of the A matrix uh, that is formed from the linear systems of the moment-based expression, uh, it turns out uh, they are a bit higher 
But uh, for example, in the case of five minutes, it is 1.5 times the original line value. And for the case of uh, the 15 minute window lines, the eigenvalues are twice of the original, twice the original values. Uh, this represents uh, in essence that the on off process, the water extraction process for the case of five minute and 15 minute window lines is uh, it's the same process. However, it has sped up. So the demand, the on off demand cycles within the window are a larger number in theory compared to the original ones. And uh, again, when we apply it to our uh, demand response program, the simple on and off uh, demand response, uh, it turns out that we can still approximate closely the behavior of the, of the post and corruption behavior. However, there is a slight difference during the transient. And that can be explained uh, by, of course, like the difference in the, uh, in the eigenvalues. However, the steady state behavior is, uh, is, still, is this still the same as the original one. So that indicates like the, uh, the first order and second order moments corresponding to these estimated parameters are uh, the same. Uh, we can potentially uh, take care of this by introducing like cross correlation statistics. And this is something that we are looking at right now. So uh, to conclude, uh, in our estimation procedure, we take as input the MI data along with some information of the fleet. We've uh, compute some statistics of the total busy time and then uh, feed it to our estimation algorithm and get as output the end use parameters. Uh, going forward, we are interested in estimating these uh, water intensity rates itself in the estimation algorithm. So right now we are only estimating those two parameters, the Markov chain lambda zero and lambda one but you can potentially add another variable in the estimation algorithm. Uh, we also would like to relax the homogeneity assumption. So we are considering what happens if there is some sort of uncertainty around, around the thermal time constraints, for example. And finally, the last step is to uh, validate this algorithm with real AMI data. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Avil. Um, we don't have yet any any questions so I can be the first one to make one. So um, one thing we are seeing in the market is some retrofitting of these electric water heaters where for example you take some measurements with a sensor that is a non-intrusive sensor in particular to, to see if the, the water to, to measure the water use uh, process. So uh, it, it means for your case that you have some data with noise. In some cases, a lot of noise because it's a sensor that it's non-intrusive. Are you considering this possibility of having noise in the data that you are using to build the model? Uh, all right, so this is something that we are looking at right now. Uh, but of course, there is expected to be some sort of noise when you're collecting this data. However, because this is like truly a, a simulation-based study, so that maybe doesn't affect a lot in there. So in the presence of uh, noise, it's possible that our estimates would be a bit off than the true values. Uh, so this needs like further work to say to actually see uh, if, what if there is noise in the data itself and how far off our estimates. But that's something that we're looking at. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay, so since we don't have questions, I will make a second one. Um, so we are looking a lot now in Europe because of data protection about the uh, data privacy or privacy preserving algorithms. So the data that you are collected, it's uh, quite sensitive, it's sensitive from the personal point of view. So some consumers might not be willing to, to share or even collect this data. So it's something that you are also considering to improve in the future. Uh, right, so that's also possible. However, uh, when we are developing these estimation schemes, we don't uh, really care about the identity of the person who's using it. So in like, it really, it actually represents a person, like it comes from some real home or something because we're considering a residential household. Uh, but in the estimation algorithm itself, we are just, uh, we look, we are mostly interested in the aggregate behavior of the AMI data. So in our respect, it doesn't, uh, in our estimation algorithm itself, we don't uh, uh, we don't use that kind of information. The only thing that we need is just the data of an individual. Of course, like there are some privacy concerns, and before collecting this data, there has to be some sort of tech data sharing agreement. And I think, uh, I mean, the minimum in this uh, case is that uh, the identity of the user will be uh, will not reveal will not be revealed to us. Okay, thank you. So I think we have time for, for this question that is here on the Q&A. Uh, so the question is, is it important to consider 
the water extraction process for shorter time, time scales. For instance, for load control strategies that use electric water heaters to enhance long-term water stability. Uh, right, so yeah, that's a, thank you for the question. So in our uh, estimation schemes, we are developing it for, uh, for like a full day profile. So in essence, uh, if you're looking at within, let's say a two hour window, for example, uh, it's reasonable to assume that uh, the process will still remain uh, constant. So if you like look at smaller time scales, maybe one minute or five minutes, I think the estimation strategy will still be valid. I hope that answers the question. Okay, thank you.